guys, what's going on? Hello and welcome to Serial and Midnight. I'm Heath, and in this episode we are talking about Sweet New Arrivals from Umbrella Entertainment out of Australia. For those that want to know, everything played perfectly fine in my Region A locked player. In fact, some of these are marked Region A, B, C, but some of them are marked Region B. Guess what? Still played perfectly fine in my Region A locked player. Remember, when shopping for Umbrella Entertainment products at their website, enter code SERIAL15 to save 15% off your order, and it supports Serial at Midnight, because it lets Umbrella know that you saw this and you said, hey, that looks good, I want to check that out. Uh, please represent Serial at Midnight when you place these orders, Serial15. Let's kick it off. There's so much to talk about. We've got, we've got an Osploitation Classics. Uh, we've got some classic horror. We've got a worldwide Blu-ray debut of a cool movie. Let's kick it off with the Osploitation Classics. As you see, I've already pulled the Osploitation Classics off the shelf. Dead Kids, a.k.a. Strange Behavior, uh, co-written by Bill Condon. Uh, this is a weird horror... It's, one of the, it's an 80s movie, right, that kind of defies uh, any sort of typical classification because it's drama it's like the mystery basically a company is experimenting on the local youth of this town and they're injecting them there's this is where well here is a syringe there there's a syringe there this is the source of uh of, there's a very famous scene here where there's an eyeball a syringe in the eyeball in fact it's it's uh this is the front and the back it's actually Get ready for it. It's on the interior artwork. The syringe in the eyeball scene. Hopefully nobody fainted. Um, this is great. This is a uh, limited edition two disc set. So we've got the movie on Blu-ray. And the limited part is the soundtrack by Tangerine Dream. Can I show one up for you guys? Uh, the full soundtrack by Tangerine Dream. So that is awesome. Here's our Tangerine Dream track list right here. Let's talk about all of these special features. I'm not going to read every single one of these features to you. Uh, what's important to note here is that this movie has had a previous, had a 2014 Blu-ray release from Severin. Uh, and every, re every extra from the Severin release has been carried over. Uh, and there's more. There are more extras that have been added, including the soundtrack. So we've got the Tangerine Dream Soundtrack CD Limited Edition, 2014 audio commentary with the director, and it's moderated by David Gregory. Um, 2008 commentary with the co-writer Bill Condon. Uh, he wrote, was it FX? FX2? Uh, cast members Dan Shore and Day Young. I'm not sure what the source of that is. I don't think that's on the Severn release, but it's, uh, well, it's 2008, right? So was that a... Now, Blu-rays were around in 2008, but it was early days. So I'm wondering if that was a DVD edition. Uh, I'm not sure. Do you know? Let me know. We've got Not Quite Hollywood extended interviews. We've got The Effects of Strange Behavior. I believe that's carried over from uh, the earlier Blu-ray release. We've got a conversation with Dan Shore. Uh, 2004 introduction with a producer, deleted scenes, stills, and poster galleries. Isolated music score. That's on those. Basically... If you're first of all, if you if you're wondering if it's worth an upgrade, tons of new stuff here. If you've not bought this before, this is the one you want to get. This is the go-to, right? This is the best, most loaded version. We got a, a trailer reel for the producer. All the trailers that uh, have come out from that, uh, you know, all those movies. This is cool. Dead Kids Two from 1996, the unofficial fan film, uh, shot in Galesburg, Illinois. An introduction by filmmakers Cyrus Kazai and Eric Anderson. So tons and tons of stuff there. Guess what? That's not all. <laughs> That's not all. We've also got this day bill. Now my day bill, it's just, it's seen better days. As always, the postal guy, our, my, our mail carrier, like this, this shipment was practically folded. It was like U-shaped to get it inside the, the, uh, the mailbox. Um, hopefully yours comes better. Uh, it doesn't look as wrinkled as mine, but here's the dead kid's Oh, it's taken up so... Hold on. Can you see it? It's it's the day bill. Let me come over here to this side. All right. There we go. Uh, these are limited. Remember, we talked about this last time. These are limited to the first uh, 100 units, I believe it was. And you uh, guarantee you're getting that by pre-ordering. And I, I don't... I doubt that these are still available for dead kids. But uh, for future 
releases, that's that's what a day bill looks like, and I think that they are pretty sweet. Lock that into place, and I will show you. Oh man, this is getting harder and harder to to hold up. There's the full range of Osploitation classics. Some great stuff, and these releases are loaded. We've talked about every single one of them. Uh, in our Umbrella coverage. There's a playlist just for Umbrella. They're all in there. Let's talk about Ghoulies 1 and 2. Now again, this has been out in America before. I think Screen Factory put this out. But if you're in Australia, I think this is your first time to buy this on Blu-ray. And uh, it's loaded with stuff too. Has anyone read the Charles Band book that came out just recently, right? A few months ago. Charles Band, Full Moon, Empire Pictures. He wrote a book. It's his his memoirs. And he talks about Ghoulies, and he's explaining that when they first market, he didn't direct these; he produced them. Uh, when they were first marketing Ghoulies, they were he was, wasn't sure what he wanted the poster to be, so he went to a friend's house, and the friend was like, "What if we have one of the Ghoulies coming out of the toilets?" And the tagline is, "They'll get you in the end." And he was like, "That's genius! It's genius! That's what it's got to be." So. That's what they roll with, and big opening weekend numbers, and then the, the calls start to come in. I took my kid to see this movie. Now he won't use the toilet because he's so scared that a ghoulie's going to come out of the toilet. Funny stuff. And they were like, so his, it was his agent or someone that he was associated with called Charles Band, and he was like, we got a problem here. Uh, there's a, the, a good numbers for the opening weekend, but parents are upset because they thought that this was going to be okay for their kids and now their kids are scared and uh he's like we can walk this back change the marketing completely or we just say screw it and charles man was like screw it so not only did this stay the marketing material but when they made ghoulies 2 they doubled down on it with two ghoulies in the toilet um fun story and ghoulies 2 is direct so hold on ghoulies 1 is directed by uh, Lucia Bercovici, Bercovici? Lucio, Lucia Bercovici. I, I think I'm saying that right. The Charles Band Italy connection is strong. He grew up in Italy uh, because his dad, Albert Band, who directed Ghoulies 2, uh, great director. He directed I Bury the Living, a, a great horror movie with uh, Richard Boone from Have Gun, Will Travel. Uh, Albert Band was uh, did a lot of stuff in Italy, made a lot of exploitation movies, and not even exploitation, like legitimate features. But uh, so Charles Band was grew up in Italy, and uh, anyway, it's cool that his dad directed Ghoulies too. So here are the two movies, and they're both on their own disc. We've got disc one disc two and the inner artwork for here it, this is totally different it's um that's the other the other artwork uh i i don't know what i like what do you guys like best we got different choices here we've got the double feature we've got this guy and then the outer artwork we've got the i think this is the best because this is the one that reminds me the most of uh when I was a kid, boy, I couldn't see these movies when I was a kid, but I sure do remember that marketing from the video store. Totally remember that. Let's do a rundown of the special features, uh, hopefully kind of quick here. I don't want to take up too much of your time. Introduction by writer-director Luca, uh, it's Luca, Luca Bekovici, uh, feature-length audio commentary. Um, you know what? I'm not going to just stand here and read this to you. It's very small print. Hopefully you can read that. I'll put my glasses black back on. Is that clear enough to read? Now I'm concerned it's not clear enough to read, or it's not big enough to read. Theatrical trailer, uh, Ted, this interview with Ted Nicolau, um, interview with the actor, just because of the chick, man, an interview with Luca Bercovici, a theatrical trailer, two, ex two extended TV cuts with extra footage taken from the archive VHS recordings. You guys, that's amazing. Uh, New Ghoulies Unflushed, audio-only interview with producer Jeff Le uh, Levy. Then Ghoulies 2, we've got an introduction by the screenwriter, um, we've got Under a Magic Moon, an interview with this. Uh, it's another interview with a screenwriter. So much stuff. So loaded, man. These things are loaded. So if you're in Australia and this is your first chance to 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 get on board, I dropped my glasses. To get on board the Ghoulies train, uh, you got to do it. What do you think? Like, let me know what you think. I didn't greet Australia. Good day, Australia. Thanks for watching this episode. These are mostly, uh, they're not mostly for you, but I know a lot of Australians are watching this, and I. I appreciate it. Let's talk about Anna Biller in, this is a double feature, so we've got The Love Witch and we've got Viva, which is her other movie that she's made. Uh, the Love Witch is a, these movies are kind of erotic, uh, but they're also horror and they're also 
funny. It's weird. It's this tone. She's very, very influenced, inspired by 60s horror. And I would even go as far as to say 60s gothic horror, like Hammer, Italian, Bava, Mario Bava, even maybe some Giallo. Uh, not even, not maybe, definitely Giallo. Um, but it's all like winking. It's all very inviting you to have fun. Uh, so this is a double feature. So the main feature here is the Love Witch, which is um, she's casting these spells to get a man that she can call her own, but it always ends in death and horror and destruction. Um, and then uh, Viva is sort of an homage to the exploitation movies of the 70s, uh, the late 60s, early 70s. Uh, and it's funny, and it, but it's also, again, pretty erotic. Um, so we got a ton of stuff here. We got audio, audio commentary with Anna Biller, cinematographer, uh, and the actor, a special message from the love, Witch behind the scenes interview with the cinematographer, um, oh, this is called cool. Festival Australia interview with Anna Biller, the Love Witch trailer, the Love Witch uncut trailer, wink, wink. And then Viva has the feature film, a short film collection here. I'm actually going to do something. I'm going to show you guys something, uh, by the way, they're all, they're both on, so the Love Witch has its own Blu-ray and Viva has its own Blu-ray. I want to do this too. Um, I have a pr the, the U.S. pressing of Viva, which came from Kino Lorber. Uh, did it come from Kino? Yeah, Kino Lorber. And it has different special features. I wanted to compare these for you guys. This has an audio commentary with Anna Biller. Uh, this does not have an audio commentary with Anna Biller. This has a short film collection. This does not. The short films included are uh, A Visit from the Incubus, Fairy Ballet, The Hypnotist, Three Examples of Myself as Queen. Behind the scenes of Viva, I think those are both the same. Viva trailer and Viva uncut trailer. So this actually has more, um, but it doesn't have, I don't, doesn't seem to have the commentary. So interesting stuff. And I'm dropping my glasses again. I better just put them back on my head. Making a worldwide Blu-ray debut, Lassiter, starring Tom Selleck, Jane Seymour, Bob Hoskins. Who else is in this? Lauren Hutton. Uh, this is from a period in the early 80s where Magnum P.I. was huge. Tom Selleck, Magnum P.I., massive hit. And uh, he ends up, Tom Selleck ends up getting a, a deal with Golden Harvest, the Chinese... Um, they had done, you know, martial arts within a lot of different kinds of films. I don't want to pigeonhole what they would do, but it's just interesting. So out of that comes High uh, High Road to China, and it was 83, and then 80. this is 84. He does Lassiter, Same Year as Runaway, the movie he did with Joey Kramer, and Gene, Gene Simmons, you know, Gene Simmons from Kiss. I uh, got to talk to Joey Kramer about being in Runaway with Tom Selleck. I asked him if Tom Selleck smells like <laughs> rich... Rich leather and mahogany. The, well, the, whatever the line from Anchorman is, I asked him if that's what Tom Selleck smelled like. Um, check out that interview too here on the channel. But uh, this comes from the same as 1984. All the marketing around this movie was like, he's a Magnum ready to load or something. It was like really leaning into the Magnum thing. Premise of this movie, it's the late, I think it's 1939, London. World War, World War II is just on the horizon. Uh, Hitler, Nazis, all that stuff. Tom Selleck is a super sexy, suave jewel thief. He gets manipulated but blackmailed into pulling a jewel heist, basically for Scotland Yard. And there's a lot of naked people in this movie. There's at least four naked people, including Tom Selleck. Shows some uh, some derriere in this movie. Uh, Lauren Hutton is in this and is nude. Jane Seymour, I think you know Dr. Quinn. <laughs> I don't. I don't think she was nude in uh, the her Bond movie, um, but. Uh, she is here, and it was just really interesting. I think this is 10 years later than that. Um, there's uh, more than that, too. But it's a really interesting movie that feels maybe kind of inspired by Indiana Jones. Like, I feel I, I don't I can't say for sure, but I'm like, well, it's 84. You got Temple of Doom coming out that year, which takes place in the what year did Temple of Doom take place because it's a prequel. Um, it just feels there's something happening in the early part of the 80s, and this is it taps into it. And this is not available on Blu-ray anywhere else in the world. There are no special features other than the trailer. Um, but honestly, I that's okay. Like I'm just happy to have this movie. These movies are so hard to find. You know, these Tom Selleck movies from this period in time, they're so hard to find. And I, I, it's I, again not a new transfer or anything like that, but. 
I'll take it because I'm just glad to have it. Uh, that's sometimes I talk about gratitude. Um, yeah, you've got to buy these things, but we have the option to do so, whereas we never have before. You know, Blu-ray's been around for over 15 years, and uh, I think this is the 16th year of Blu-ray, and this is just coming to Blu-ray for the first time, so I do have gratitude for that. Thank you, Umbrella. Uh, this is sweet as well. This is a retro sci-fi double feature. We've got the theatrical version of Battlestar Galactica. Runs about 2 hours and 20 minutes. It's basically the pilot stuff put together, fleshed out, for a theatrical audience, and uh, the same for Buck Rogers, which is the two-parter edited together. Uh, Buck Rogers, I mean, that pilot for Buck Rogers is strange. It's great. I like it a lot, but it's strange. It's almost like a Bond thing. Like they're going, like the opening credits has got this like sexy song. It's just like slowly, the camera's just slowly panning over like girls in space bikinis and stuff. Uh, we and then we can talk about Buck Rogers season one versus Buck Rogers season two. I don't think either of these features is new to Blu-ray, but this is the first time that they've been packaged together. So if you don't have them, you want these movies, this is a great opportunity to buy them. Again, no special features here. Uh, they do have subtitles. That's not a special feature, but they do have subtitles. Uh, the reversible artwork, by the way, is just, it has the ratings. It's this artwork with the ratings thing that they always give us the reversible. And I like that. So we, we get to, uh, to choose for ourselves. I wanted to show you guys my own so i have this i've already got the but this is my australian buck rogers set uh, this is from madman out of australia so this is my uh my buck rogers blu-ray set and it came from australia so i thought the australians might appreciate that of 2017 is i think when that came out this is the season one that includes the uh the movie from madman but what this is great, right? I mean, I I'm so happy to be talking about this stuff, and I want to know what you guys think about these movies. And have have you seen Lassiter? Uh, it's it's a good movie. I'm really glad that it's on uh, that it's on disc now or on Blu-ray now. Um, there's so much here to talk about. Dead kids, uh, retro sci-fi, ghoulies. Are you scared to go to the toilet because of ghoulies? I would like to know. <laughs> Mention that in the comments below. Guys, thank you so much. Thanks to the Umbrella. Remember, Serial 15 at Umbrella's website saves you 15% and you are supporting Serial at Midnight in the process. Take care. Until next time, I will catch you later.